Well, hello everyone. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Please say hi to my cat, Ignis. If you are into video games, then you know where I got the name from. He is not actually shy, but he is playful. So, there, there you go. If, anyway, if you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content on this channel. Liking the video allows me to figure out what content you like to see. If you are a returning visitor and or subscriber, please continue to like the videos. It also helps me figure out what type of content you enjoy seeing and what type of content you like to interact on. This video is about setting up for solar observation, either for visual or for photography. In my last video, I talked about why you should get into solar observation. This video is all about setting up for such a thing. It's not that different from night astronomy, but this gives me a chance to actually set it up for you. So if you are new to solar observation and you're going into astronomy store, this at least gives you some idea of what things you should consider when preparing to go down such a path. So before I get to the telescope and all the other stuff, let me talk about the mount that, or the mount that you have a decision to make on. There we go. I now use an equatorial mount. What is an equatorial mount? Well, for those that do not know, this type of mount allows a telescope to be in parallel with the Earth's rotation. What do I mean by that? Well, if you are new to astronomy, then you may not realize that the Earth is actually tilted. Now, you might think of the Earth like this, and I have my bowling ball as an, as an example, and luckily one of the, one of the plugs that I, that I, one of the grips is actually elevated, so that allows me to visual, visualize it better. So you might think of the Earth. So most a lot of people think when that when as the Earth rotates around the Sun, people understand that. But they think that the axis of the Earth, imagine it's the North Pole, is parallel to my hand, and it rotates like this. The re the reality is the Earth is actually tilted, slightly tilted, and it rotates like that. The tilt and its rotation around the sun is what actually causes the seasons. But that's not the sub that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that the Earth is actually tilted as it rotates. So an equatorial mount allows a telescope to be parallel to the Earth's rotation. And therefore, this allows you to keep track of objects as they go across the sky. Now, you might be wondering, oh no, I need to go out and get the equatorial mount. That is not the case. Keeping track of an object as it goes across the sky really only comes into play in deep space astrophotography in which some people like or have the desire to track an object for for hours so they so they can get enough light in order to create a spectacular image and if you're not doing if you're not going to go to that step most of the things that you observe even in, in visual astronomy and astrophotography you don't need an equatorial model. Whereas for like, if you're looking at the sun, the moon, the planets, you can, well, vi obviously visually, you don't need to track them. And even for astrophotography, 
You don't need to image them that long to get a great image. And therefore, something like this really is for some for your desire to get into deep space astrophotography. Even then, if you see yourself observing for hours, then it's recommended you get an equatorial mount. But if you're going to be observing for, let's say, a few minutes, 30 minutes, then you really don't need to go out and get an equatorial mount. That, that means you could get another type of mount. And a lot of the basic telescopes comes with this mount. And the mount that I'm talking about is the alt asthma mount, which is basically altitude asthma. And how it works is quite simple. It's not parallel to the Earth's rotation. It's parallel to the horizon. So it will move left and right, and you can move it up and down. And for visual astronomy, this is more than ad adequate. Even for astrophotography, this could be adequate because you're not going to be imaging a lot of the objects that long anyway. You don't need to image the moon that long. You don't need, really need to image the sun that long. You don't really need to image the planets that, that long because the way cameras, at least a lot of the new astronomy cameras now for astrophotography, you can get hundreds, thousands, well, hundreds of images in a few minutes. And the celest this is was from my Next Star 8SC. This came with it. And this is more than enough to visualize objects, either for astrophotography or visual astronomy. But I learned a lot in trial and error, and I thought, oh, I need to get an equatorial mount. And so I went out and got an equatorial mount, which actually isn't bad. I do enjoy it. But that's the mount. So those are the mount choices that you pretty much have to decide upon. Now, the next step is what type of equipment you're going to use to observe the sun. Because never look at the sun without the proper equipment you will go blind. I don't need anyone running out, looking at the sun, then coming back in and saying, I looked at the sun, now I'm blind. It's your fault. No, never look at the sun without the proper equipment. In this case, either get a solar, a solar telescope, or if you are using a DSLR, get a filter or attach it to your solar telescope. If you are using binoculars, you get filtered. You go to the astronomy store, you ask them, I would like to look at the sun with my binoculars. They will give you filters or give you the equipment in order to make a filter to use with your, with your binoculars to observe the sun. Never look at the sun without the proper equipment and shades do not count. Shades do not protect you from the sun. So anyway. The next thing is, since I do not use a DSLR nor binoculars to look at the sun, I use a solar telescope. This is my Lunt 60 millimeter telescope. This is a great solar telescope. Now, you can get larger ones with a larger aperture. But the great thing about the 60 millimeter is that it's portable, extremely portable. So therefore, it's easy for me to travel with it, move to different spots with it. But when using it with an equatorial mount, you attach it like so. I'm not going to get into the technology of, well, I guess I can, at least how I would set it up. You attach it to the equatorial mount, and you can see how it slanted. Now you can change the slant, but you can see how it's angled. And then the next thing you do is you make sure it's balanced. What do I mean by that? Well, as the telescope moves, well, it's a weight to it. So you have to make sure in order for the mount to be able to move that everything is properly balanced. So the, the telescope has a weight to it and 
equatorial mounts come with a counterweight. Well, the next thing you do is there is a hinge on the side here. You want to hinge it so it can move freely and you make sure it balanced. And so therefore what do you do is, and I've already balanced it because you see there's a weight right here. I've already balanced it. But basically, if I move it in, it can go up here. But if I go down, you see how I don't want the weight to drop. But So you make sure the weight and the telescope are properly balanced. So I'm balancing it. All right. See? Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. You tighten it. Put it back. Lock it into place. Telescope is now ready. Well, the telescope and the mount is now ready. You make sure if you're out in the field, even if in your house or apartment and you're observing from a deck or a roof, make sure you have a battery. This is a Kendrick Astro Instruments battery. So I've gotten that from the astronomy store. Everything is set up. Now the next thing that you would do is you either attach an eyepiece, you would, you would attach a video camera, you would even attach your DSLR camera because I have an earlier video of me attaching a DSLR camera. But I no longer use DSL, DSLR cameras for solar observation. Now I use video cameras. The video camera that I use is the ASI 178 monochrome camera, basically black and white. And I will take this attach it. Now the next step would be me attaching it to my to my laptop so I can actually do the observation or my ASI Air which will allow me to view images from my smartphone which ZWO makes. That I don't really need to go down that step. And then I would begin the process of looking at the sun so it, or at least trying to find the sun. And you can see how it moves. That This is why you need everything balanced. Because if it's not balanced, then when it moves, it's out of alignment and the weight of the either the telescope or the weight will knock it out of balance. And you see how it moves and it can, tracking the sun. Technology is amazing, isn't it? So let's say I'm using all this to track the sun, and I move it. And let's say I found the sun. Well, for this type of telescope, I use, it's pressurized. So I always, I know it's hard to see, but basically what I'm doing is Taking off the cap on the side, take it off. I don't know, let me actually move this telescope so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see, sorry about that. Sorry about that too. So you can see my telescope has something on the side, basically. And that's this is where you used to pressurize it. Pressurize it to the atmosphere in a particular area that, you in, that you're in. You don't have to do it every time you go out into the field, but I tend to do it every time I go out into the field. And so I take it off. And then it's pressure tuning. I 
pressurize it. And once I pressurize it, then I begin, once I start looking at the sun with my camera, I will use this to put it, I will, and then I begin to put it into focus by using the focuser and the pressure tuning to really begin to bring out the features of the telescope. And that's it. That's basically how I set up for stellar observation, either for visual astronomy or stellar astrophotography. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe. Please leave any questions that you have for me. And I will see you again. And my cat, oh, he's not going to meow. Well, my cat will see you again too.